these systems. Uh, in particular, the, uh, the Wigner solid phase occurs at the high magnetic field, low filling factor termination of the fractional quantum Hall series. Look at this uh, left panel. Uh, we have uh, resistance uh, measured in transport versus magnetic field. The one-fifth fractional quantum Hall effect on the left. As you move to higher field, you come into a place where the resistance increases with temperature. Uh, and uh, that's an insulator. This is the low filling factor insulator uh, that uh, I'll be talking about uh, a great deal. This uh, is ascribed to uh, a pinned uh, solid. It's very insulating. If I uh, operate at low del fridge temperature, say 80 millikelvin, and I go, you know, even if I'm measuring happily at 26 Tesla, say, if I go to 27, I'm not going to be any warm. It's, uh, it's, it's very sensitive to magnetic field as well. So it's very difficult to measure in uh, DC transport, almost impossible in linear transport if you go far enough. Uh, at the same time as this insulating a phase emerges, uh, if you look at the microwave spectrum, uh, shown here is real part of diagonal conductivity versus frequency, and it would probably be better to call it RF because there's a peak only at 80 megahertz. You uh, have this striking resonance at um, uh, almost half of E squared over H in uh, peak conductivity. So it's, it's quite insulating at zero frequency, but uh, by 80 megahertz, it's, uh, it has a, a strong conductivity actually comparatively um, uh, easy to observe. The resonance is understood as a pinning mode in which pieces of solid oscillate within the disorder potential. Wigner solid is pinned by disorder in any real system. All right, uh, so pinning by disorder. Let's look at the dispersion relation of uh, uh, the uh, crystal. The blue is a Wigner crystal in high magnetic field. Uh, it, it has a uh, Q to the 3 halves mode that is gapless. If you add some disorder pinning the crystal, the dispersion saturates at uh, larger length scales, and eventually uh, in the large length scale limit uh, comes to this uh, frequency, that's the pinning mode frequency. So at small length scales, it, it, would, it should still show a clean uh, dispersion, large length scales not, at least ideally. Okay. The, uh, Wigner solid is indeed the predicted uh, low filling factor state of uh, 2D electron gas. Uh, it has been, it has been uh, investigated for quite a long time. Uh, the uh, few remarks about it. Uh, Wigner solids now have been seen in 2D gas uh, by NMR. Uh, effects on line shape, but also quite recently in a tunneling approach from uh, Ray Shuri's group at MIT. Uh, an improved description of the Wigner crystal uh, came from uh, uh, my host, uh, Professor Jane, uh, referring to these crystals as uh, crystals not of electrons, but as composite fermions. And I'll be talking more about that uh, Pinning modes and Wigner solids actually are ubiquitous in quantum Hall systems. They, uh, they can live uh, in the high uh, magnetic field, low filling factor insulator, as I've discussed. They can also live in the so-called reentrant insulator that lives between the one-fifth and two-ninths quantum Hall effects. Pinning modes are also visible within integer quantum Hall effects in sufficiently good samples. In that case, you have 
one or more filled Landau levels and a partly filled Landau level at uh, low uh, filling factor and the partly and the dilute quasi particles or holes uh, can Wigner crystallize and give a pinning mode. Also, uh, pinning modes are quite evident in the charge density wave phases at uh, higher Landau levels, uh, which Jurgen touched on uh, yesterday. So the resonances are uh, a good tool for in investigating these many solids. They uh, can be used to sense phase transitions. And again, where DC just shows something quite like a microscope slide, or in the case of a quantum Hall effect, a beautiful flat um, uh, conductivity minimum, the microwaves will show you uh, uh, resonances. Just briefly, my microwave measuring setup that I've been using now for uh, quite some years. There's a room temperature uh, source and a room temperature receiver. They uh, send microwaves through uh, a type of microwave transmission line known as a Cochlear waveguide that's fabricated in metal on the front surface of the sample. It's like, like a coax with the top and the bottom chopped off and flattened by a steamroller, basically. Uh, it uh, it couples to the 2D gas below it by a fraction of a micron capacitively. And from the uh, measured loss uh, of the uh, microwave signal, we're able to calculate with some quantitative accuracy the diagonal conductivity, both real and imaginary, uh, uh, of the uh, 2D gas. Just a cross-sectional view of the uh, transmission line with the black here, transmission line, this is actually not so far off to scale, the 2D gas being the thin red dotted line. I show the electric fields in the low loss high frequency limit, which actually means I simply calculate them statically, assuming the 2D gas um, has only very, has essentially no effect on it. Uh, if you have a situation where you are in high frequency low loss, uh, the uh, conductivity comes very simply because you have this frequency independent uh, extinction formula that works. Uh, we have a uh, more sophisticated approach calculating everything distributed that we use to find the limits of, the, of this high frequency low loss uh, approximately. Okay, and again, the coupling is strictly capacitive. Uh, Okay, so the outline of the uh, more recent results in the rest of the talk, there's a double quantum well, which has, uh, which is strongly unbalanced, and these are bilayers now, strongly unbalanced. One layer has a composite fermion liquid near nu equals a half. The other layer has a low density, low filling factor Wigner solid. The other thing I'd like to talk about is multiple Wigner solid phases in bilayer regime, wide quantum well, so it's a wide single quantum. Hitting. All right. My thumb is too big. All right. The uh, so this is a schematic of the setup with the double well highly unbalanced. We have a composite fermion liquid in uh, the top layer. Uh, we call that the high density or N sub H. And below it, a uh, much lower density of uh, Wigner crystal. Uh, it's a 10 nanometer um, uh, algas barrier between 30 nanometer gallium arsenide wells. Okay, so there's uh, 
the wave functions uh, are separated by this 10 nanometer barrier, but they live in the middle of the 30 nanometer zone. Uh, the original purpose of these wafers uh, was worked by Shiagan's group that's now uh, on the net, where you did, uh, where they did geometric resonances of composite fermions near one half, so in low effective field, where the resonances would encircle one or three or other size groups of uh, Wigner uh, lattice sites. Okay. These samples are a little bit tricky for determining the uh, low, the minority layer density NL. It is, uh, what one has to do is actually take uh, the Trubnikov de Haas uh, oscillations at low magnetic fields to get a total uh, density. The charge can transfer between the layers below nu one, trans uh, above, for nu above one, I should say. Uh, that stops at uh, lower nu, higher field, as evidenced by transport. So you subtract the high density uh, as measured from its quantum Hall effects uh, from the total uh, density to get the uh, low layer density. And that actually turns out to work uh, pretty reliably. Finally, to some real data. Okay, this uh, panel shows pinning modes at, uh, taken at many uh, magnetic fields. The uh, high density layer filling factor is marked at right plus uh, certain fractions are highlighted. The spectra are offset upward for each magnetic field uh, proportional to the filling factor. Uh, so you have this effect. Uh, and of course, the pinning mode itself is due to the NL layer, the minority layer, the low density layer. Okay, so at each, as, as you move forward, as, as you increase magnetic field, the Pinning mode shows uh, very clearly the effect of fractional quantum Hall states in the majority layer. Uh, typically, with the frequency being smallest for when you're right on uh, uh, fractional quantum Hall effect, and uh, larger for when you're in between or in the neighborhood of the Fermi circuit. Uh, so let's look at different uh, NL, which we can vary with gates, uh, and a back gate to be precise. And uh, we can we see that the effect on FP, which is plotted on this axis, is sets in only for low enough densities in the uh, low density layer. In fact, you need to have the lattice constant of the Wigner solid exceeding the, uh, wave, the center to center well separation of 40 nanometers in order to uh, see the way that it's really moving to kick in. Uh, I'm going to mention that if the top layer were a really great conductor, not a 2D gas at high magnetic field, but a piece of metal, you would see nothing because the bottom layer would be completely shielded uh, from the transmission. So it, the top layer is not an effective screener uh, of the uh, microwave field. In order to go into this more deeply and also to bring out some points about uh, pinning modes in general, I'm going to talk about how we extract densities from the pinning mode. And at this point, this process is pretty accurate. So uh, one way is with uh, sum rule. And uh, the easiest way to see this sum rule is just to consider a charge moving in a parabolic potential in a magnetic field. That system has two uh, resonances, one above the cyclotron frequency, one much lower. That lower resonance is what we identify with our pinning mode that we're modeling. If we look at the integrated intensity of that, that goes as the oscillating density, which I call NOSC, times uh, the peak frequency. Uh, so measured S over FP, integrated real diagonal conductivity, if 
divided by resonance frequency gives us the uh, 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 participating density. You can also uh, divide that by a, a total density and get a participation ratio, which I'll uh, be referring to later on. Another way to look at uh, density is to simply look at the dependence of F peak, the, re the pinning mode frequency on the density itself. Many samples, uh, basically every sample we've worked with, uh, shows uh, F peak versus N versus density uh, somewhere or in both places on this plot at higher densities, N to the minus three halves, which is coincidentally, um, not coincidentally, probably what's predicted from pinning mode theories. Whereas at lower density, we have uh, n to the minus one half uh, f peak behavior. F n to the minus one half is is what we see for on varying on varying nL in the system I'm now talking about. So why does it do this? F peak increases as n decreases. So that means as the shear modulus, which of course increases with density for a Wigner crystal, increases the frequency decreases. So it's a uh, stiffer crystal, uh, lower frequency. The reason for that is that the closer the carriers are holding to their crystalline positions, the further they are from features in the impurity potential so that when the crystal is displaced, uh, it costs it less energy. So uh, basically the carriers fall deeper into the impurity potential when the uh, crystal is softer, when the density is less. So I'm going to uh, get uh, the oscillating density from uh, the F peak, where F uh, N oscillating goes as F peak to the minus two, which is what we had on the last slide. And I'm also going to get it from the sum rule, okay? And I'm going to write it as an image charge density. So we're assuming that for each Wigner lattice site, uh, a certain amount of charge is locally depleted in the, uh, uh, in the uh, high density layer. And uh, that amounts to being uh, an image charge. The, uh, it is essentially the reduction in the in, in NOSC from the true density, NF. Okay? So the, we're seeing less density oscillate than the known density. The difference is this image charge density. And we take it from the two different methods, and they agree really pretty well, uh, especially in the neighborhood uh, of the uh, one half And it looks like essentially what we're doing is uh, doing a local compressibility measurement of some sort on the uh, high density composite fermion layer. Uh, because we get the density Ni in agreement in these two different ways, it tells us actually that the image charges seem to be tracking along as the Wigner crystal is driven. Uh, if you get it from F peak alone, F peak is essentially come in, in pinning theories comes from static quantity. We have a, a Larkin length which characterizes uh, Wigner crystalline disorder, uh, the Lorentz force, which is you know just the magnetic field that's there, plus the shear modulus uh, built into the Wigner solid, which gives you uh, F peak. Whereas the sum rule integrating intensity measures all oscillating. So it looks like uh, the image charge uh, is oscillating along with the driven uh, uh, solid charges. Now I'm going to shift gears to wide quantum wells. I'm going to have to move quickly. Uh, we look at wide quantum wells, which may have single layer or uh, double layer uh, behavior, depending on their uh, uh, 
density. Larger density uh, tends to uh, split the charge distribution into two peaks that can act quite bilayer-like, essentially bilayer. We gate them from the top, but we don't short-circuit the microwave transmission line by spacing the gate away from the tuning gas on a piece of glass and applying hundreds of volts to it. So we have a front gate that's biased as hard as a back gate. Let's look at a phase diagram uh, taken 20 odd years ago in Mansour Shayegan's group for uh, wide quantum wells and insulating phases. Okay, the horizontal axis here is gamma, which is the Coulomb interaction divided by uh, the uh, delta SAS, the excitation gap of the uh, associated with the well. It is essentially a measure of how bilayer the system operating, how the uh, uh, tunneling is, tr is faring. Tunneling is trying to uh, make it single layer, and Coulomb energy is trying to make it uh, double layer, so it's measuring that. OK, at low gamma, if we look, and the colors here show uh, the resistivity measured in transport, uh, we trace down filling factor at low gamma, we see essentially a single layer fractional quantum Hall trace with a one-fifth fractional quantum Hall effect for the entering insulator and terminating insulator. We go along the higher gamma and the insulating phase suddenly starts to occur at a much larger filling factor. At the same time, you see the one-half fractional quantum Hall effect of the 331 two-component variety, uh, which uh, is an indicator that you're getting a comparable intra and interlayer uh, interaction. So this is where you're starting to see more bilayer effects. The insulating phase seen at high filling factor like this in this region is taken to be bilayer. If we took gamma much larger, we would expect everything to simply be what we see here at low gamma double because it would be essentially two layers in parallel. Resonance onset, so if we uh, start in the fractional quantum Hall liquid and come down onto the insulating phase around here where I'm indicating, you see a powerful resonance uh, emerging uh, right about uh, 0.45, so a little deeper than the boundary drawn here in transport. But uh, it, uh, it, it's just a simple resonance that emerges. The interesting stuff happens if you uh, enter the insulating phase at uh, somewhat lower gamma in here where the uh, interactions are comparable, then you have a uh, resonance evolution that's much more complex. You see that uh, the resonance comes in, it reaches a critical filling factor, snaps back, amplitude is suppressed, snaps back to lower frequency. And it does the same thing, but not quite so strongly again. So there are two definite transitions in the uh, resonance, and uh, we interpret things like this uh, as phase transition. We can show we had to, we took uh, large amounts of data of this sort at many different densities, uh, which uh, varies essentially the path you're taking into that uh, phase diagram. At low density, you have smaller signal. Uh, and just a gap in intensity. And the, at high, de high density, we have much larger signal. This is a sketched. Hello, hello, test number three. Hello. Crosstalk. Okay. Uh, am, I, am I on a party line? Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, 95 miles. Hello. So it gets much. Hello, hello. It, it gets much stronger uh, for the larger density, which also means uh, we're essentially coming into the uh, insulating phase uh, further from the uh, uh, phase boundary. Okay, Easy, easier to see uh, if I just redraw the phase diagram. In this case, uh, the same phase diagram on the new gamma plane, 
but uh, the gray area is where we see residents of uh, above about five microsiemens. The dotted lines are experimental limits in density or magnetic field. Working in a superconducting magnet, we see these two transitions. They're quite clear. Going to a resistive magnet, we see three more. The transitions under some conditions show a jump in FP, but uh, always show some uh, suppression of the resonance. Okay. And uh, this shows uh, more of the raw data that goes into this phase diagram. Here's F peak, uh, which, is, which uh, decreases some as you move to the insulator. Here is eta, the participation ratio from the sum rule. It gets much stronger as you go deeper into the insulator. Uh, so uh, if we... Uh, so I drew the transitions on the, uh, on, on the uh, data here. You can see the region where you're getting strong changes in FP at the transition. It happens here fairly close to the... Uh, okay, how do we explain these uh, uh, phase transitions? Okay, the... One uh, explanation uh, that has been uh, fortunately presented to us by Professor Jane is that uh, the uh, insulating uh, uh, Wigner solid uh, is comprised uh, of many uh, of, of many different. There's a prediction that the solid is comprised of many different. Uh, flavors of composite fermion Wigner solid, whereas filling factor is reduced, the vortex number associated with composite fer fermions increases. Okay, and the transitions between the different vortex number solids occur roughly at one over odd number fillings, one fifth, one sixth, and one ninth. The shear modulus is predicted uh, to uh, go pretty wild at these transitions. So one would expect to see something in the of course, this is for a single layer system, no disorder, and uh, so it is uh, not completely uh, germane for bilayer systems, but it at least gives us a mechanism for transitions. Within the bilayer sphere are some old hartree fock uh, calculations, which show structural transitions from paired triangular lattices at large separation to where it's mostly in intralayer interaction that is important, to uh, square, centered square or rhombic phases where intra and interlayer interactions are comparably important to even one component of very small separation. The, uh, so uh, those two uh, have uh, been predicted. Unfortunately, those have uh, the wrong trajectory on the phase map. If I try to plot where they are, not only are they pretty far from where, the trans where we see the transitions, but they also go the wrong way. They go off the phase map. Whereas the composite fermion transition would, is, is driven by filling factor. Another thing that may be going on, I, I don't know whether it explains the uh, transitions, but it certainly may have to do with some of the pheno phenomenology that we're seeing, is that uh, there may be admixture or even microemulsion phases as we move into the insulating phase. I've noted that the resonance turns on gradually as you increase gamma. And the transitions are most pronounced, uh, especially showing F peak jumps, moderate gamma. Uh, so there may be some role to a liquid or other non resonant component that's being built into the. Uh, uh, 
this S over F peak just shows the increase of precipitation in the moving Finally, I'll uh, talk about uh, tilting the sample in the field, uh, where we put, simply put it on a rotator. Uh, if we do that, Tilting it uh, makes the resonance sharper and larger. We still see phase transition. We remove as things are being tilted. Two more slides. The, uh, we plot for a couple of transitions, only two transitions, one for the open symbols and one for the closed, uh, nu versus theta. And the reason why they're different symbols uh, is that there are different densities. Plotted the density of the color. The, the critical filling always moves up with uh, uh, always moves up with uh, theta. So uh, this is not consistent with uh, hartree fock predictions as tunneling is being reduced, but the in-plane field would be expected to uh, uh, produce tunneling. That we get the same sort of behavior on changing uh, density as on changing uh, in-plane field uh, would indicate that uh, we're not seeing anything fancy and anisotropic going on and getting induced by the uh, density. You can collapse the data by simply taking uh, n to the one half divided by cosine theta, which is the uh, effective, uh, effective uh, tunneling length along the field uh, divided by the carrier separation. And in that way, the tra the, each transition collapses to the various ends. And we see uh, very clearly in this plot that you're down to something happening at a fixed filling as, was as would be predicted by a composite fermion transition, for example, uh, in the uh, high tilt, uh, more bi bilayer-like low tunneling uh, situation. I'm running low on time, and I'll put up my summary. Thanks for your attention. We have time for questions. I guess I have a couple of uh, related questions. Uh, in the transition, do you see any hysteresis? Uh, no. no. And uh, also, the first uh, plot that you showed with the transition, it looked like maybe you have uh, two nearby resonances, like the resonance was the shape look like yeah I know I know what you're talking about uh, sometimes what happens is that on the uh, I can't rule that out but sometimes what happens is that when you're on the edge of a resonance you can get an artifactual effect just due to a reflection because it, when you're near a resonance the uh, reflectance of the sample changes and you can get a little reflective thing so I, I I can't I can't rule that out but uh, I'm sticking with the Well, I had a myself. Um, do you see any higher order modes uh, in the, re I mean, if you, the picture that you have where you look at the collective motion? Not in these samples. In, uh, in other samples, people? In other samples, we certainly see uh, some suggestion that we're getting a wave vector effect, okay? Uh, we never have been able to really nail it down to a harmonic series using some plausible relation, but we can get multiple peaks and stuff like that uh, in, in some other samples. The pinning mode theory I talked about was uh, 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 low Q limit, essentially, but that's not necessarily always the case. Okay. So uh, maybe I should know the answer to this, but... Uh, the frequency of the pinning mode, uh, is that somehow correlated with the strength of the disorder in your system? Is that something yes. that one can calculate? Yeah, the, the disorder is, as, as disorder strength increases in any of the models, um, the pinning mode frequency always goes up. And the same happens in your experiments? Uh, I don't have a disorder knob, but uh, from, the, from the best I can gather, by doing things like putting aluminum alloy in the samples and that sort of stuff, the answer is yes.
Well, if there are no more questions, let's thank the speaker again.